The Elements Massage brand believes massage therapists deserve a supportive team, business and marketing resources, linens, lotions, and the chance to learn as much as they want. So many Elements Massage studios offer continuing education too. What's better? They're hiring. To get your foot in the door, let them know we sent you by visiting elementsmassage.com slash ABMP. That's elementsmassage.com slash ABMP. I'm Darren Buford. And I'm Kristen Coverley. And welcome to the ABMP podcast, a podcast where we speak with the massage and body work profession. ABMP podcast listeners, happy holidays. This is our last podcast for 2021. There will be two more podcasts this week. There is going to be the Rebel MT coming up on Thursday and Ruth Warner's I Have a Client Who coming up on Friday. Then everyone takes a break, enjoys their holidays, and comes back fresh in the new year. On January 4th, we'll be back with the new ABMP podcast episode with Massage Business Blueprint, talking about ways we can all kickstart our practices for the new year. Our guest today is In Harvey. In is known as the Massage Sloth. He graduated from the Florida School of Massage and has been a licensed massage therapist since 2006. He teaches massage on YouTube, runs a successful blog and website, and has been an author and columnist in Massage and Body Work magazine. For more information about In and his new book, Massage is Weird, visit MassageSloth.com. Hello, In, and hello, Kristen. Hi, everybody. Hey, Darren. Hey, Kristen. Hi. Welcome to the ABMP podcast. We're so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Let's start by learning a little bit about your massage story. How did you discover massage was your path? And what inspired your fantastic business title, Massage Sloth? So my path as a massage therapist started because I was in a lot of pain as a kid. Uh, And I'm talking about from the ages of 12 to 18, I just had a whole bunch of low back pain. I would be laid up on the couch for days. We went to doctors, we went to physical therapists, we went to chiropractors. And at no point did I really make any connections. I didn't know why I was in pain. All I knew was that it sucked and that nothing much seemed to help. One day I was at the chiropractor uh, and he said, hey, Ian, do you want a massage? There's an opening right now. And I'm very grateful that it was so sudden because I was a very timid young man. And uh, I might have just said no if I had been given a moment to think about it. But no, I went in there. I told the massage therapist where my pain was. And he worked on my hips. And for the first time, I realized, one, that I had hips. (laughs) I wasn't aware of them. (laughs) And two, that my hips were related to my low back. And that's where my pain was coming from. Like the massage didn't fix me. It didn't. There was no massage miracle. But there was a miracle in just my own connection with my own body. And from there, I was able to start finally making progress on getting myself out of pain just from that revelation. And that's that's what inspired me. I started working on friends. I started reading books. And that made me want to give people a similar revelation. If that's all that I can do is just teach people the story of their body and how it's put together, I think that that's pretty worthwhile. Why am I the massage sloth? It's because I feel like I I move in slow motion. I basically lean for most of my day and I let gravity take me through these different movements. Um, I am very much inspired by myofascial release and it can be just a very slow and methodical way of working. And when I thought of who I wanted to be uh, when I'm teaching on YouTube, I I thought that that, a sloth seemed like a pretty good inspiration. So congratulations on your new book, Massage is Weird. What's the story behind the title? (laughs) It's what I wrote on the document and I left it there. (laughs) No, the, the, 
The name massage is weird. It's just a phrase that's been running around in my head for the past 15 years that I've been a massage therapist. Like sometimes I'll just be working on somebody and my brain will just suddenly reboot and I'll be like, wait, this is weird. (laughs) (laughs) Why why am I uh, doing this slow methodical work on this person's back? There's no other point in my life where I am making this much contact with other people. This feels weird. And, you know, it's, I think that it's something that we can recognize because it's something that clients go through. Massage is different. Massage is different from any other health co- healthcare modality that they might have been through. Indeed, it was for me when I was a first-time client. And it's something that I think that is inherent to massage, that we're different from other healthcare modalities. And it's something that I think that we can embrace. If we try to be overly clinical, if we try to be mechanics, we lose some of that, some of what makes massage so unique, the expressiveness, the artistic nature, the connection that we have with our clients. That's all unique. It's all weird. And I want, I just want it to be the first thing that people see on the front of the book that, hey, I recognize that this is not like anything else in the world. Massage is unique. Massage is weird. And it sets a fun tone and expectation for what readers will discover once they start reading the book. Yeah. And I'm hoping, you know, as I was going into this, I wanted it to be a gentle landing for anyone who is struggling with massage, whether they're struggling with self-doubt, whether they're struggling with techniques or their place in the world as a massage therapist. I want them to know that, hey, I've been there. I'm still there. And we're in this together and you are welcome here. And I'm glad that you are a massage therapist. And I'm hoping that comes across in my tone in the book. Speaking of tone in the book, the book contains a wide range of topics and chapters, including titles like I suck at massage and my clients are driving me crazy. What inspired you to write the book? And what do you hope that readers take away from the book once they've explored it? So that was the first thing that I wrote down after the title was I suck at massage chapter one, because that's what led to this entire book. Something that I've encountered again and again on forums and in correspondence with massage therapists is that they think that they are no good at massage and that they think that they're the only person in the world that thinks that. And I want to refute both of these false notions. You know, one, you can't suck at massage because massage is awesome. There is a very, (laughs) there's a very high floor for massage. If you do the exact massage that you did the first day of Swedish, that would still be a worthwhile massage. It's still methodical, thoughtful touch that lasts an hour, and that is worthwhile. So you don't suck at massage, and no, you're not the only person in the world who thinks that they are struggling, that they are adrift. I spent an entire chapter just trying to help people realize that we're in this together, that this is a an unusual profession, and that just by being yourself, just by being playful, just by being intuitive, you are doing something worthwhile and you do not suck. Um, as for the other chapters, like my clients are driving me crazy, I tried to make every chapter about the challenges that we face in this industry, the challenges of having to navigate what can be a rather sink or swim kind of industry. You know, we we have so much kindness and so much support during massage school, and then you're just kind of chucked out into the river, and it's you alone with a client And that's it for the rest of your career. And it can feel, it can be a very lonely feeling. It can be very solitary. And I want people to realize that I've been there, that I've talked to hundreds of people who have been there. 
and that these are all problems that can be solved. If your clients are driving you crazy, it's time to get different clients or change the way that you relate to your clients and lay down stronger boundaries. And these are all things that I talk about in the book. Let's take a short break to hear a word from our sponsors. Anatomy Trains is delighted to announce a brand new dissection live stream specialty class on September 18th, Lumbo Pelvic Stability, a one day layer dissection with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and master dissector Todd Garcia. The early bird price of $150 is held until September 10th. After September 10th, the price is $250. Come see the body's actual core for yourself. This course will be provided over Zoom webinar with multiple camera views, live chat, and Q&A. Visit anatomytrains.com to sign up. Now let's get back to the podcast. Let me circle back just for a second with regard to, we didn't name it per se, but we were talking essentially about imposter syndrome. And Kristen and Ian, is that something that you find in your fellow practitioners out there? Absolutely. And I would say that it it's so common that it's almost unusual not to have some imposter syndrome. <laughs> it's because massage is a solitary business. It's us and our clients. We are in that dark room with our thoughts and it can be easy to slip into self-doubt and it can be easy to think that you're the only person in the world who has that especially when you walk out of that room and everyone else seems fine everyone else is putting on their professional face their happy face everyone else is succeeding and even if you are succeeding, even if you're getting a lot of return clients, it can still be easy to slip into that negative headspace thinking, well, this massage sucks. This is the worst one I've ever given. There's no way that they're going to rebook. I'm an imposter. I might as well just leave now in the middle of the massage. And by recognizing that, I think that we can take away a lot of the sting and a lot of the stigma by recognizing that this is such a common thought among massage therapists. We can recognize it as something that is not a flaw in our massage, but something that is part of the uniqueness of this field, this one-on-one -on -one business that we're in. And we can get rid of it. I agree. And I really like to, Ian, what you say about recognizing it, naming it. That'll be the first steps towards addressing it. So people and therapists can really start sorting through what's legitimate areas that they could learn more and expand their knowledge and practice from times when self-doubt is winning the internal dialogue. And really, everything's okay. We're just doubting ourselves and putting ourselves in that negative headspace. So I think that's absolutely pertinent. Recognize it, name it, so you can work towards changing the things you need to change and letting go of the things that aren't serving you. Absolutely. And just realizing that because you've got, because you don't feel firm in your identity as an expert, that's going to lead you to do things like watch videos and read books and better yourself. So it's part of the same drive that makes you excellent, but you don't need that self-doubt. You will be excellent without that self-doubt. Absolutely. Ian, tell us more about pain and what you call the continuum of massage intensity. Ah, uh, yes, the continuum. Uh, so <laughs> the, <laughs> the continuum of massage intensity is what I call starting with what is most body friendly and then moving on from there. So something that I see a little too frequently is that people will jump to what they consider their most successful approach which can often be trigger point therapy, which can be um, gua sha, cupping. And these are all excellent modalities, but oftentimes the only thing that a body needs to get out of pain is something that is very 
easy, something very gentle. I find that moderate pressure, myofascial release, can give me a lot of progress for a lot of different kinds of pain without the negative side effects that can come from intense, deep digging work. So, I'm not saying to throw away your toolbox. I'm saying to, when we're dealing with pain, that the body can be very responsive, the body can be very resilient, and all it needs is a little bit of stimulus, oftentimes, to get it out of that painful place. And so keep things like deep psoas work in your back pocket. You can pull that out as you see how your client progresses. If they're making progress, if their pain goes away, then hey, the moderate pressure, uh, body-friendly stuff worked, and that's all you need. If they hit a plateau, then have a conversation with your client. Hey, I'd like to work with these hip flexors. They're located here on your body, and this might feel a little bit funky. Is that something that you're willing to try? And I go over that in the book. We, we, I give a lot of examples of ways to have those conversations about more invasive types of massage, uh, about working more deeply, about things that might potentially be painful. And basically the, the main thing is that I want people to kind of start with what's kindest. Start with what's most body friendly and keep those more uh, invasive or potentially painful things, just keep those for future sessions. You can still use them, but you can do so once you've seen how their body reacts to those other things. Ian, you describe yourself as an introvert. What advice do you share in the book for other introverts who are working to grow and manage the practices? So I, I do strongly identify as an introvert, and I also struggle with depression. I struggle with social anxiety. And these are all things that can make the business of massage a little difficult for some of us because it can be important to put yourself out there. It can be important to let people know who you are. And so my recommendation, and I talk about this thoroughly in the book, is if you are an introvert like me, let your business run itself. Do as many things as possible to make your business self-sustaining so that when you're having a bad week, so that when you have a limited amount of extroversion left, your business keeps plugging along. And my recommendation for that is to use internet advertising and put it on a schedule so you don't have to intervene. You don't have to do anything manually yourself. But every month from $5,200 is going to be uh, spreading your face, spreading your business far and wide on Facebook or on Google. And let your clients do the work of rebooking. So I recommend online booking software that makes things fairly effortless for you and that keeps things in a reasonable schedule. So if you're an introvert like me, you might find that your life is much simpler and uh, much less chaotic if you don't allow same-day booking. And if you make people plan ahead, and that can be scary, especially to a newer massage therapist, they might wonder, is it okay for me to say no to clients? And I say, please say no to clients. (laughs) (laughs) Say no early and say no often and get them to plan ahead. And so your life can be very dependable and predictable. You will know a week in advance. I work on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I will be working from this hour to this hour. And that is much less overwhelming than, oh, I might be working 12 hours today, depending on who calls. So be kind to yourself and let the business work in the background. That's my advice. Speaking of saying no to clients, you write about client therapist boundaries in a therapeutic relationship. So important. What tips do you have for practitioners to maintain healthy boundaries with clients? 
My main advice here is to be mindful. Whatever you do, however you forge your therapeutic relationships, go in mindfully rather than letting it be chaos, rather than letting it be something automatic. There's two ways that I see that a therapeutic relationship can go awry. And that's one, by trying to be a perfect therapy robot, by eschewing all forms of personal connection and trying to get rid of small talk and just talk about things that are clinical and say, uh, to form a wall between yourself and your client. That to me is not, you're limiting your own power as a massage therapist if you're not letting yourself form those connections with your clients. The second way that this can go wrong is by mindlessly allowing those relationships to go wherever they go. Relationships in massage are going to change over the course of years. Over the course of five years, your client might have some babies. They might change relationships, they might change jobs, they might have bad weeks, they might lose loved ones, and you are going to be a constant in their life. You're going to be a source of support for them, and you're going to find yourself counting these people among your friends, and what I want is for people to go into this evolution mindfully instead of just letting whatever happens happen. So as that relationship evolves, you start to go out to dinner, you start to go on tennis dates and lunches and maybe tell each other gossip. And that can quickly become something other than a therapeutic relationship. You can fall into a dual relationship. Their pain outcomes and their wellness outcomes are no longer at the top of the list. And what I'd like is even five years in for you to remember where you came from. Remember that you are the therapist and that they are the client. That's how things started. So even if you take yoga classes with some of your clients, you are still able to set boundaries. You're still able to respond if they start to cross those boundaries, if they start to come late, if they start to be extra demanding or asking you to come in on your day off. You can still have that conversation that. This is what I need as a professional, and this is what I think would be most helpful for you as my client. In your chapters, I'm the one in pain and I'm so burned out, address injury prevention and practitioner burnout. What's your best tip for preventing injury and burnout? So for both of these, my recommendation is to stop treating yourself like a machine. Massage cannot be your only form of physical output. Massage cannot be your only form of social output. You need variety, just like your clients need variety. Just working at a desk job can be fairly detrimental to physical health and to people's pain and to how they care their body. And in the exact same way, massage can create repetitive stress injuries. We can end up with painful thumbs and painful wrists. And it's because we're trying to be these perfect massage machines. But you're not a machine. You are an athlete. You need cross training. You need variety. You need to dance and play and change stuff around rather than always being locked into this one routine. And I think that that ties into burnout as well. Find the things in your workplace. Find the things in your ways of working with clients where you are saying to yourself, I am a machine and cut those out. If you are saying yes to every client request and coming in on your days off and pushing your body past its physical tolerances and pushing yourself past your psychological tolerances, then that's expecting yourself to be invincible and you're not. Instead, if you arrange your life and arrange your work around the fact that you are a person, 
that you are a human, that you have needs, that you need variety, that you need vacations, that you need enough money to eventually retire. These are going to send a very different message to your body and a very different message to your mind than expecting yourself to always perform and to always be available, always be on. You need to sometimes be able to just relax. Ian, you've shared such great information already with our listeners today, but I'm curious, what's the most important message that you want listeners to take away from this podcast? It's that massage can be part of a life of quiet satisfaction, that you don't need to strive to be perfect, that you don't need to be worried about how good of a massage therapist you are. Instead, you can let massage be massage. Massage is by default something amazing. It's something unique in the world. It is just having that hour of uninterrupted mindful contact can be such a huge revelation to people. It can be so comforting. And it can support people in their wellness journey, no matter what you do. And so, let massage be easy. Let massage be massage. So take that pressure off of yourself. Take the pressure off of your work life. Let that be simple. Let it be predictable. Take the pressure off of yourself to be perfect. Because there's no such thing as perfection in massage. And ask yourself, which is better, someone giving their perfect massage routine or a massage therapist who is having fun, who is playing and dancing and following their intuition? I think that the fun, playful massage is going to be better in about 100% of the cases. So allow that for yourself. One more thing, Ian. Can you tell us about massage sloth clubhouse on facebook and how listeners can connect with you yes so massage sloth clubhouse search for that series of words on facebook and you will find my forum the thing that i think i'm proudest of in this entire massage sloth multiverse uh it it, it's a group of currently about i think eight thousand people and it's all massage therapists. It's a closed group, so you can you can vent on there. You can ask questions that you might not be able to ask anywhere else. And it's a very supportive group. I'm on there too. I answer questions. Everyone's very kind. And uh, uh, yeah, join us there. It's lots of fun. I want to thank our guest today, Ann Harvey. For more information, visit massagesloth.com. ABMP podcast listeners, ABMP members have access to more than 50 discounts through their membership. Services include discounts on continuing education, home utilities and cell phone service, legal fees, office equipment, and more. Go to abmp.com slash discounts to learn. Thanks, Ian, and thanks, Kristen. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Kristen. You guys are great. You are great as well. No, you're more than great. You're amazing. Thank you so much (laughs) for being with us today. Congratulations on your book. Thank you so much. Members are loving ABMP 5-Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology, two quick-reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. ABMP members, log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the Featured Benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com more.